5 DSR that has a lot of megapixels. It's not that great at low light, and the dynamic range is really mediocre for a modern day camera. But yeah, but it's not a modern day camera. It came out like maybe four or five years ago, and in camera terms, that's a pretty aging machine. But I think that the people that did buy that camera and that would consider to buy that camera now, and especially people that bought it in the day, tend to be professionals. I think a lot of professionals own this camera because of its high resolution, its large uh, sensor size, and what have you. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to invest in a camera like this, you want to have really good glass. So I would recommend the 35mm uh, Mark II or basically any Otis lens. Uh, you're still going to get good results out of something like the 85mm 1.2. Um, you're going to still get the, all the character from that lens, but it's not going to be um, as dramatic of a change uh, going to the 50 megapixels as like a sharper yeah, lens. Yeah, sure. If you were looking at some of the Zeiss lenses, they would definitely pro provide the most sharpness and the most uh, rendering, but you could still make really great pictures. I used that on all of the L lenses I had, which is basically at the time was all of them, and I didn't really have any, any yeah. quarrels with it. I felt like uh, the <clears throat> biggest trouble that I had with that camera was probably operating it in low light. Yeah, uh, this camera does really, really great in like perfect light. You know, if you're in golden hour and you're strictly just shooting there, then this is like like kind of like an ultimate setup. You put like an Otis lens on this or uh, whatever Canon lens you want, and you're gonna you just know that you're getting the best results. But as soon as you hit like something like a low light situation or a situation with a lot of dynamic range, like midday sun, yeah. then uh, then you're not getting the best results compared to a lot of like Sony sensors. But I feel like that's kind of a crux of all Canon cameras, at least for the dynamic range, is it's always a little bit weaker than some of the other sensors that are out there. But it does have some other interesting parts to, to the sensor like the way it does the colors and things like that that might have you considering it still yeah yeah the Canon system really does have great color I mean uh, if you're shooting JPEG or you don't want to push put a heavy heavy edit on uh, on like a different file or something then you know it's great for you it's also great for video because you're kind of more stuck in the colors so the Canon color science really does make a difference but again like everything is kind of plowable in a way but if you're yeah. if you're on EF mount and you already have the glass then uh, in 2020 you might want to consider the 5 DSR if you just are really into high megapixels and you do like a lot of cropping or something yeah I don't think that you would really be interested in the 5 DSR if you were looking at shooting like a high frame rate or if you were doing like sports stuff I really feel like it's more for professional like maybe uh, people who are doing commercial work people who are maybe doing yeah. some travel work and of course us as wedding photographers we use it all <laughs> yeah the time. I, I think we're, we're kind of outliers in the wedding photography world of people who wanted a 50 megapixel camera <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah well, we I mean, both had it yeah, at some point yeah. like we both really enjoyed it but yeah it does slow down your I think uh, it was I think we both were interested in it because we had like really nice glass we had both had the right. 35 millimeter mark to uh, Otis yeah and I mean, yeah Otis's 55 millimeter Otis, Otis. Otis. I shot the 85 millimeter Otis on it for like a couple of uh, sessions too yeah and the but, 55 of course and those things are amazing like, those but yeah look so great with that and, with and that you know it, yeah shooting what what are your experiences shooting weddings with it mine were um mostly positive i the only thing that i really feel like that it slowed me down on like because i'm not the type of who shoots a lot of shots in succession so having like a, a high speed camera doesn't really matter that much and having crazy autofocus doesn't really matter that much to me to me, the, 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 what I liked the most about it was all the detail that I could get. But later in post, I would have to do a lot more work to get, you know, the skin looking perfect yeah. you know, and that kind of stuff. But I would always have the information. So I liked having all the information, but... At the end of the day, it was more work. I would say. Yeah, I feel like I liked it because I shot like I shoot all primes, and so I'm not like I'm kind of zooming with my feet a lot, and I, I knew that I didn't have to get, like I could always zoom in digitally a little bit later. Right, I've kind of yeah. uh, gotten out of that habit over the yeah, years. Yeah, you could but... do a lot of cropping on that camera. Like if you didn't shoot it exactly right, you could crop, and you, you still have it. I mean, 50 megapixels to. Yeah, I, I would say the you know um, I always shot it in silent shutter. The shutter was pretty quiet on it. Um, Silent and, isn't really silent, but it's yeah, that's quieter. What, I think that's what Canon calls it, though, right? They call it silent, but they should call it quieter. Quieter shutter. <laughs> <laughs> so, silent. yeah, I shot that in quieter shutter mode, and uh, <laughs> it was uh, three frames a second, which was uh, just fast enough. Yeah, I mean, three plenty. frames a second for weddings is plenty yeah, good for plenty. me. Like, Plus, I don't... like, when you're talking 50 megapixel files, you fill a buffer fast. Yeah, I'd say that the autofocus was pretty much the same as, like, the 5D3. Um, you mm -hmm. know, same amount of autofocus points. and It's it, basically a was... 5D3 on steroids, really. Yeah, it's uh, pretty much an upscaled uh, like 5D3 sensor. I mean, the dynamic range did get like a stop better, I'd say. And yeah, that, that was the, kind of like the other crutch. Like I was shooting the Pentax 6 or 5Z and this mm -hmm. camera at the same time. And yeah. I just, I could not push my files like I could with uh, 
a, a camera with like 15 stops. Yeah, that's range. what ended it for the DSR for me too, is I had the 5 DSR and I had the GFX, and I was shooting them side by side, and the GFX just was getting so much more dynamic range, and the same similar size files. So yeah, yeah I just made the but, change. But, but like, yeah, in uh, 2020, this camera is going for, we just looked it up, it was about like $1,400 in yeah, some Yeah, I cases. mean, if it's going for 1000 to 1500 yeah. bucks, that seems like a no-brainer, especially if you're getting into commercial work. Yeah, if you don't need the low-light performance of like a more modern camera or the dynamic range of a more modern camera. And you're comfortable and you're just... shooting a camera with a regular viewfinder and you're not like ingrained in the mirrorless system. Yeah, yeah, I mean, drive you crazy. yeah, mirrorless is cool. It's not completely necessary in my opinion. No, but of course not. But yeah, I mean, uh, you if can you're still already crazy. used to a mirrorless, coming to this might be a little annoying. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But uh, I, I don't know. Like, like I think it's still a great choice if you're just shooting in like perfect lighting scenarios. But yeah, other totally. other than that, if you um are, are shooting in like less than ideal lighting, then you might want to look into some other. That's cameras. That's kind of how I feel of uh, most medium format cameras I've ever owned too. They're kind of a similar situation as the five BSR. Well, should we jump on the iPads and look at some pictures we shot with it? So we had like overcast on this day and I did uh, boost the shadows like a little bit in this image just to even it out. It's not like completely golden hour. And Do you know what lens that is? I think probably the 85. It looks like the 85, yeah. Yeah, that's One, what that would be my guess. Two. But um, yeah, you know, in, in good light, there's nothing really better than this camera. Um, and then uh, here's a kind of golden hour, like end of golden hour type, uh, type of shoot here. And... You know, uh, boosting up the shadows, you can see a little bit of noise in them, but it's nothing too crazy. But if you did shoot this on a more modern sensor, you would uh, get a little bit better performance out of it. You probably but, don't know what ISO you shot that at, but I'm guessing it's under 3200. Uh, ISO 100, I, I, I would. Oh, that was. Really yeah, nice and then ISO. boost it like a little bit. I, I would definitely, yeah. definitely say so. Cool. Um, and then uh, here, uh, again, like if I shot this on a more modern sensor, I could probably get more. Uh, dynamic range out of the shadows here, but I, you know, was a little bit cognizant not to push it over like a stop and a half or whatever, uh, because you did get a lot of noise and it, you know you couldn't do so some things that I can do on my Sony sensors with this camera or like the Pentax or whatever else. But um, yeah, you know, uh, again, just uh, really good light. It works out well, but uh, in uh, not so good light, you're gonna have a couple of limitations. That's yeah, kind of the main thing. Definitely have some struggles sometimes, but most of the time it works out pretty well. Oh, I have one more. Let me get that. That's yours. All right. So, uh, yeah, this is um, the, not the Otis, uh, the Zeiss 135 uh, APO, which is one of the highest resolution uh, resolving lenses that you can buy. And, yeah, in this image, you can definitely see um, how, how well this uh, camera does with the great lens and at golden hours. So, yeah, you you know, you have to do a lot of retouching, which I did in this photo. But, um, yeah, you can, you know, see a lot of good detail in the hair right there and all that good stuff. So, yeah, if you have some awesome glass, um, you know, you probably want to put it on a 50 megapixel pixel sensor, and that's why I bought this camera, I guess. Yeah, it really, really resolves a lot. Uh, this is one of the very first shots I ever made on the 5DSR. I remember the shoot really clearly. Uh, it was a bridal shoot that I actually did, and we got her up at the top of the hill there, and I had her walking across, and all these birds came flying in. I just love this picture. Like, it, you can get a lot more sky out of this photo than you could, like, on previous Canon cameras that I had, um, there, there's definitely more dynamic range in it than some of the other ones. I mean, it doesn't compete with modern day mirrorless Sony sensors, but for Canon, this was pretty great in its time. Um, this was shot with a 35 Mark II, and you can tell that this one was like, uh, I was just trying to make something that was a really cool environmental portrait. Um, this one here was another shot that I did in the city. Uh, this one's actually a reflection shot, if you can tell or not, but... Um, I shot this and I saw the, it was raining that day and I saw kind of like this cool composition coming off the ground and it took me a little while to get my couple in the right spot. But once I got them all moved around and got them in the right spot, I just loved this shot. And it's kind of crazy like when you look at it because the, this is all reflection basically, but it kind of looks like there's clouds or something kind of flowing through there, but that's just the ground. And here's another one of those kind of reflection shots I did. I did this on the 5DSR as well with the uh, 85 1.4. And you can I can tell that right away because of the bokeh balls that are coming off the uh, ground here are really, really symmetrical. They're like perfectly round almost, which I didn't really like of that lens. But the camera itself obviously makes fantastic photos. Um, this one here is another engagement photo I did. And this one I, I really feel like this exemplifies how much detail you can really get like because I shot this... Uh, as a silhouette, I mostly exposed for the sky, so I was able to, I didn't lose as much detail in the sky, obviously. And I, yeah, I just really like the colors of the 5DSR and all the data in, that you get out of it and resolution. 
Yep. Um, if you're a regular photo footage viewer, you can probably tell that my enthusiasm for this camera is not like at the highest, right? So it's not as exciting as like uh, the, the modern day uh, Sony cameras or like a medium format camera to me. It's just, um, it's high megapixel. I'm not that into high megapixel right now. But again, if, if this is like something that, um, that that you want you just want the 50 megapixels and you already have the ef glass then this makes a lot of sense because in 2020 like we were saying it costs 1400 dollars. yeah for the cost like you can really get professional looking results that are almost out of this world almost medium format like and you can have so much resolution you can do so much cropping like it just gives you a lot to work with so if you're not delivering hundreds of thousands of pictures a year this might be a way to go. Yeah, I may not be that excited about it, but if you have uh, EF mount glass and like high resolving EF mount glass specifically, specifically, then um, you should be pretty interested in this camera. And if you don't need it for low light or high dynamic range situations, then you should be really excited that this lens cost uh, $1,400 in 2020. Yeah, that's a great price on this camera. If you're thinking about it, I mean, we both paid way more than that when we acquired it. Yeah, when it first came out, 3,200 and, uh, yeah, 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 three thousand plus easy. Yeah, and nowadays it's less than half of that. So yeah, and it can still create amazing images. It's just not mirrored.